Hello everybody, welcome here to ABA with Dr. D. This is Dr. D, your host, uh, where we share ABA with you. Today we we're gonna cover a really important topic. This one is called mass trial. Mass trial is a very common uh, type of procedure used to teach discrimination, which is part of your bullet point there. So this will be a, the first uh, you know, video uh, from that sequence because we will have one on uh, random rotation. Okay, so uh, let us begin. Let's cover a couple things about mass trial and, and these bullet points. Sorry, it's, it's a lot of bullet points, but I'll do my best to, to summarize this. Uh, here it says that, you know, mass trial is one of the most common intermediate procedures used to teach discrimination. Uh, with mass uh, trial, you can implement it with or without distractors, or you can integrate it within successive discriminations, including other targets within the sequence. And here it's getting a child to respond with the same target behavior repeatedly. The con concept is repetition or pra practice makes perfect. Now it is part of the DTT model and usually used with younger children and with children who have significant skill deficits. Uh, we repeat the same instruction with potential distract distractors in the environment and the focus is one target at a time versus doing random rotation which once again we will have another video on random rotation. You will continue this process until child um, without prompting gets a correct response and criteria is met. You, uh, you then move the target to expand the trials or random rotation. Now, the most important thing here is about the, the supervisor's decision on whether the mass trial is the, uh, the process or the procedure that you would want to implement or you want to have the, the child go through. Uh, there are some individuals or some uh, supervisors or consultants that don't like mass trial. They rather get the child to go directly into uh, the random rotation uh, process. It is very much, once again, a decision um, that needs to be made by the uh, supervising uh, BCBA or consultant. Um, here, once again, we give you this particular information because it is a very common type of procedure that does work. It does work, especially for individuals that are younger and once again, that have um, you know, significant delays when it comes to, or deficits when it comes to the responsiveness for certain targets we're working on. I've had experience where I have had to implement or recommend the mass trial and the mass trial moves a lot quicker. We don't have to go through a long series of a process where it's several sessions. Sometimes within a session, we make adjustments to get go into random rotation. Okay, so it is a decision that clinically you need to make based on the data they, that you're seeing there. Okay, now once again, there are a variety of mass trials uh, or options in regards to how we can do it. We can do a mass trial without distractors and it should be easy for the learner. So here you're just repeating the same trial several times in a row while providing reinforcement in the presence of the correct response and there are no distractors. So here, for example, you say, um, you know, touch red crayon and you have the red crayon by itself. So the learner will have a high probability to touch the red crayon. Okay, now you could also implement mass trial with some distractors where you're now implementing a minimum of two items in the environment where you can have, for example, a blue crayon. You're still targeting red crayon, but now you're adding a blue crayon in the environment. And you're saying, hey, touch red crayon, right? And that's where the client would touch the red crayon. Okay, and you kind of move it on. And you can also have mass trials with successive discriminations, uh, which is when you're targeting one response in the presence of a stimulus and then another response in the presence of another stimulus. So for example, I'm working on, uh, you know, once again, color identification. So I say touch, you know, the red crayon and the child touches the red crayon. And then I switch it up. I say uh, touch the blue crayon, the child touches the blue crayon. And I could do a couple of these trials in a row. So for example, I could say touch the blue crayon. Great job. Touch the blue crayon. Awesome. Touch the blue crayon. Great. And then I move it on to touch the red crayon. Fantastic. Touch the red crayon. Great. All right. So I can kind of move it you know, back and forth. That's where you're able to, once again, get a variety of responses. And we will get into random rotation because random rotation does integrate the success of discrimination where it does become about moving across different types of instructions. Uh, but for this particular uh, type of uh, procedure, we're focusing on one target at a time. We want to reduce the amount of targets because once again, we have an individual that does need for us to break it down this way to achieve the success. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna watch a video together. What I want you to pay very close attention is the part that you know we will have an SD or Q or instruction. Uh, we will have a response and we will see a consequence, which will be the reinforcement. 
okay? And that's what you're gonna basically see here. You're gonna see a situation where the teacher is presenting the same instruction over and over again, okay? Now, once again, uh, this is usually the first step for teaching a lot of discrimination training. Before that, typically we do use airless learning. So airless learning, as you remember, is when we basically provide instruction in an immediate prompt. Here, there is an opportunity to respond independently, to respond incorrectly or to not, not see any kind of response, which allows us, now us an opportunity to teach, to prompt, and to do all the other stuff that's required, okay? So we'll watch the video together and, and we'll definitely be able to break some of these things down. Okay, welcome back. So we're gonna watch this first example of a mass trial with one step instruction. Um, really important to pay very close attention to the instruction that's being presented. Now we do have these videos available for you, just a video by themselves, so if you wanna just show this as a video model. But here's an example, once again, of what mass trial looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play. Um, fast forward a little bit here. Hi, Edward. Okay. Give me the hammer. Thank you. Okay. So that right there, I'm gonna pause it there. So did you catch the, the instruction or the SD? Okay, if you said, give me the hammers is, is, is the instruction, that is correct. Here what the, what the instructor is asking the child to do is to hand him the hammer. Okay, so that's the instruction. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. That's gonna be the one instruction that's gonna be repeated several times. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play, put him here. Give me the hammer. Awesome, thank you, Edward. Okay, so after Edward gives the hammer, uh, the behavior technician, the instructor immediately provides a praise. Um, once again, if you are implementing, you know, praise or reinforcement systems, highly encourage you to look at our assessment, uh, preference assessment videos, and also the information on that, because when you're running these programs, you wanna make sure you have identified the correct uh, reinforcers to make sure that this is successful because if you don't have those items ready and you're not utilizing the correct reinforcers potential reinforcers this is not gonna work okay now another really important thing here is also making sure that you're working on some prerequisite skills uh, when you're teaching these particular programs in this particular uh, example is we want to make sure a child uh, is able to sit right a child can sit a child can attend has eye contact or can be able to respond to some of these instructions, for example, their name, okay? So these are some things that are prerequisites or required prior to these programs that we're gonna look at. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play button so we can keep watching this, a couple more mass trial instructions. Give me the hammer. Thank you so much, Edward. Give me the hammer. Thank you, awesome job. Okay, so basically very, very straightforward, correct? And then once again, um, you know, this is only one of the procedures for the discrimination training. Um, your your supervisor should not recommend only a mass trial because that's absolutely not what we wanna see. This is only required and needed for once again, le specific learners that do need a bit more practice with some of these programs that we're working on, okay? Like they say, practice and repetition does work and, and you know, that does make perfect like the saying goes. So this is one of the videos. I'm gonna go ahead and go on to the next video. Because, actually, uh, because one of the things that I wanna say too about mass trial is you can use it with a variety of programs. You can use it for listener responding programs where you're expecting some type of like, you know, motor response or, or some type of instructional uh, response or following instructions from the learner. Uh, you can also use it for vocal verbal responses, which is, you know, such as interverbal programs, okay? But we're gonna watch another example for gross motor imitation, so you guys can get another uh, example of mass, uh, mass trial, okay? Okay, Joseph. We're gonna play a little bit of a game, okay? Are you ready? Okay, cool. Okay, so you have to concentrate, right? Joseph, do this. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it there. So the instruction for this particular video is do this, right? That's the instruction for this. So that's what we're looking for in the next coming trials. Once again, this is a type of you know uh, program that can be utilized for a variety of different skills. Okay, so 
I want you to just focus on that. And once again, I want you to track the aspect of whether the, the instructor is providing praise or reinforcement after the, the response that we that we want to see. Yes, right. good job. Which they are. So good. It's a very good praise right there. Very nice. What do you mean? Okay, cool. Do this. All right, give me a high five. Nice job, Lisa. Again, look at me. Do this. All right, look at you, give me two high fives. You're so good. Okay. All right, so I wanna pause it there. So those basically are examples of mass trial. They're very straightforward, very, very, once again, good to, to get an idea of what that is. Uh, you may have situations where the child gets the incorrect response, and that's where you would have to implement your error correction procedure, which we'll have a video uh, as part of the se series of you know videos that we are providing to you, so you can practice some of these sequence. But this mass trial one is really good, it's really important for you to, if you're, once again, a technician, a consultant, uh, that you do have the, the the knowledge and experience and the training to run these types of trials because they're very common and they're very helpful for a lot of learners. So I hope you like this video. Once again, if you haven't done so, make sure to subscribe. We're getting to 2,000 subscribers, getting almost there. Uh, please, once again, I, I, I strongly encourage you to tell your peers, tell people around you know the field about us. We're still very small. We're a growing community here, so we want to make sure that we continue you know getting more support from you guys. But for those that are already subscribed and keep watching our videos, thank you so much. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Take care now.